Hey, so I just wanted to show you a little bit of um, about Google Docs and the um, specifically the spreadsheet function um, because uh, you know a lot of you may not have Microsoft Excel at home, and uh, so and even if you do, it's it's good to you know it's good to know how to interact with a, a spreadsheet that's not Excel. Um, the beauty of something like Google Docs is that you know it's a uh, it's an application that you can access from any computer, you know, as long as you have an internet connection. So anyway, I thought I would just, uh, you know, give you a little quick uh, tutorial on the basics of using the spreadsheet application in Google Docs. And, um, you know, you'll need to use this probably uh, to analyze the, um, the data from the uh, measurement lab that we did. Okay, so for, here's, a, here's a blank spreadsheet. Um, uh, I can try to show you how, you know, this is kind of what it looks like when you're at the Google Docs homepage. And to create a, a new spreadsheet, you just click on Create New. And then you've got these different um, applications that you can launch. You know, if you want to do some word processing, you click Document. If you want to put together a presentation, you know, kind of like a PowerPoint, uh, they've got an application for that. Uh, what we would want to use is the spreadsheet. So when you click on spreadsheet, you know, you get something that looks looks like this. Okay, so um, here's what I want to show you. So for example, let's say you've got some, um, you know, you uh, have a graduated cylinder sitting on your, uh, on a triple beam balance and you're gradually um, adding water into the graduated cylinder and you're monitoring uh, the mass change. So we could, uh, let's say we want to graph the data. Okay, so the first thing we got to do is enter the mass and the volume data. So we could just start typing mass and I'll put uh, grams in parentheses so that we know what the units are and then we'll we'll type in volume and we're going to use milliliters for this one. Okay, so let's say that you um, when you add one gram, let's say we add one, two, three, four, five, okay? Um, and over here, it turns out that when we add exactly one gram of water, that comes out to be, um, you know, big surprise, one liter. And when we, when we add two grams of water, that occupies two milliliters, three, three, four. Okay, so it's very simple. Um, this is, I'm just keeping it very, very simplistic um, so that I can show you some things about the spreadsheet. Okay, so you'll notice first thing, uh, for some reason, the, you know, our column headers, mass and volume, they're sort of uh, parked way over on the left of the cell. So they're left justified. Uh, however, the numerical data uh, is right justified, and that looks kind of hokey. So um, one thing that might be nice to do is just get everything centered. Um, that's you know that's one way to do it. It's not the only way, not necessarily the best way, but let's say we want to get these things centered. Okay, so all we got to do is just click and drag so that we highlight those data along with the headers, and then to center them, we go up here to the toolbar, and this little icon, that's the one you want to use when you're trying to you know control the formatting so if I click see how I click the icon where it looked like things were centered and you know boom you've got it nice and uh, formatted um, let's say that uh, just for you know just out of coincidence that we were able to record our data to the hundredth place for both the mass and the volume okay so we want their you know uh, and let's say just, you know, again, coincidentally, that every measurement was, you know, 0 .00. And we want to indicate the uh, decimal places, you know, to the hundredth place. Up here, this is a formatting uh, tool where you can choose from a lot of different formats. And so here's the one that we want, right? Say it says two decimals. So there, it just happens that they, I guess... Um, you know, they have found from their users, you know, Google, uh, when they study how their users use these tools, they, I guess they find that two decimal places is a very popular, um, very common formatting. So there, so now you've got things displayed to hundreds place. So it's very, very nice and easy. Um, 
what else can I show you? Uh, I, I don't know if I did this already, but uh, the headers, you might want to make them bold or not. Okay, so that's if they're not bold. But if we want those to be bold, then just click the, the B there. Um, and if you want there to be like a dividing line between these two columns, you know, you can select that, go up to this icon, and then if I click this guy, then I've got a little dividing line here. Let's say I want the header um, row to have kind of a nice background to sort of, you know, set it off, make it look a little more professional. Um, let's see, I don't know. I don't know what color. What do you think? Uh, I'll just click that one for now. Okay. So, you know, you can you can really make the, you know, spreadsheets are pretty pretty dry. Uh, it's a pretty dry topic, but you can, you know, make them kind of pop a little bit with uh, judicious use of, you know, borders and formatting and then a little bit of color. All right. Now, um, so those are just some of the aesthetics. Now, let's say we wanted to graph this data. Uh, just like in Excel, you can graph data in Google Docs uh, with the spreadsheet application. So what we do is just like in Excel, you highlight the data of interest and then you can either go up here to the insert menu or they have handy icons right here. So a lot of the things that you know that you use like 90% of the time are right here in front of you, right on your dashboard. So if you click insert chart, okay, then you're going to have a choice and uh, you know the interface is a little different from Excel um, uh, I think it's probably a little better once you get used to it um, so anyway you can select bar charts you can select uh, you know horizontal bar charts and it gives you a little preview here of what it might look like I think we better stick with uh, just a line chart for this um, and let's see think everything looks okay um, okay so let's just say insert okay all right so that looks pretty good and then there's this little shaded area at the top so if you want to move the move this um, graph out of the way so you can look at your data again uh, you see how the cursor changes from an arrow to the hand when it gets into the shaded part so now just move that over and then see where it says chart one there's a pull down you can we can edit this and I think you can see that we do need to edit this because it's um, it's missing some critical elements like a title and axes labels so you can definitely do that so let's click uh, edit uh, so I guess that get, brings us back to the interface we were in um, Ah, you see how the default was this area chart, but we don't really want the area to be shaded under the under the curve. So let's just click. Let's just pick a plain line chart. Yeah, that's fine for for us. Then um, we need to customize and customize. This is the tab where you can actually uh, type labels. So. Right now we're on the vertical axis, so we want this to be uh, volume, all right, because that's our Y variable, all right. And then if I click horizontal, now when I type in, it'll give me that'll control the title for the uh, for the mass. So this is mass, and I may have forgot my units for volume. Okay. There we go. Um, and let's see here. Now, one other thing that's a little odd is I'm not getting, um, oops, I'm not getting units here like my uh, scale on my the mass axis. Let's see what's going on here. Um, well, you know what? This is kind of new to me too, um, so we can figure that out together. Um, so yeah, we'll, 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 we'll figure that out. Uh, here's the title. So we could say, you know, um, mass versus volume. Okay. And then if we say update, then, you know, at least we've got, uh, at least we have the proper, um, labels on our two axes. Okay. You got the curve here. All right. 
good. So that's uh, that's that. I'll get back to you on how to get the scale on both axes. Um, that's a little strange. Um, now, what um, what I should I'll say this in class, but just to reinforce it here. So when you go to my um, chemistry handouts page, okay, and you scroll down, you know we're in scientific measurement and uh, scientific calculations. Um, here's the lab. Here's the lab section. So this link will take you to the lab handout that you used for the precision uh, lab and. The link right underneath it says spreadsheet for class data. So if you click that, that will take you to a page that looks just like this. Okay, it'll take you to a, an actual spreadsheet in Google Docs. And you can use this, you can just do cut, uh, you know, copy and paste, and paste this into your own Google Docs spreadsheet. And then you're off and running. Now, what I have here is. Uh, you can see, you know, I've got lab group, all the, you know, every different lab group. I don't know that, you know, we may have had fewer or more lab groups than this, but this is just a template. And um, here's just some fake data for the 10 mil cylinder. So here are the masses of the waters that were measured uh, when you used a 10 mil cylinder. And um, so here's where some of the magic happens uh, in spreadsheets, and that's using formulas. So you go down here, we need to calculate the average mass uh, among these, you know, nine uh, mass measurements. And so, yeah, one way to do it is you could type all these numbers into your calculator, you know, add them all up, and then divide by nine. But, you know, this being the 21st century, we have spreadsheets for that kind of stuff. So if you, some of you may have done this, but if not, here's how you do that. So in the cell, where you want the the average value to appear, you begin by typing the equal sign, okay? And that tells the spreadsheet that you're not just going to type in like a static number. You are going to define a formula that depends on other values in other locations in your spreadsheet, all right? And so, um, the first thing we do after we type the equal sign, okay, now this now the spreadsheet is like prime. It's like, uh-oh, I better pay attention. Then you give the name of the function, and so we want average. And the the super, the super secret code, uh, spreadsheet code for averages is the word average. So that's that makes it easy, right? And then now that we now that it knows what function to use, now you have to tell it where the numbers are in the spreadsheet that you want to average. So now you open a parentheses and then you can do one of two things. You can give it the um, the range of addresses and so the first number is in column B row, fi row 5. Okay, uh, So that would be the address of this guy, the 10.64, is B5. The address of 11.01 .01 is B12. Okay, so those are the addresses. So I could type B5, and then I would type a colon, and then B13, and that would that would mean the whole range. Or you can do something a little bit simpler, which is this: take your take your mouse, put the cursor over the first value, and press down the left mouse button, and then drag. Okay, when you get and when you cover the range of values, release, and you can see it deposits the addresses uh, in one fell swoop. And then all you got to do now, you've opened a parentheses. Now you need to close the parentheses. Okay, and then hit enter, and then boom, you've got your average. Okay, so it takes a little bit. You have to think about it just a little bit at first, but then once you get onto it, um, this is just. You'll never want to touch your calculator again for stuff like this. Okay, um, so that's how you calculate averages um, uh, using data that you know is anywhere on your chart. So you're going to do the same thing. So when you uh, populate this column with the 100 mil cylinder uh, mass data, then you'll do the same thing here. All right, just like I showed you. And then the only other thing I got to show you that's a little bit different is. Um, over here. So 
this is the, the deviation column. And what that is, is for each individual mass value, you're going to calculate the, the absolute value of the difference between each individual mass and the average. Okay, so here, let me, let me just show you. So type equals, okay, now it knows a formula is coming, and we want to take the absolute value of the difference between this guy and the average for this row. And so to tell the spreadsheet absolute value, you just type ABS, okay, so you can use an abbreviation for that. You don't need the full name. Open parentheses, and then I want this number Okay, so I just clicked on this guy and see how it put its address in here, B5, and then I got to type a minus sign, minus, and now I want to take the difference between that and the average, so I got to click on this guy, and then, so now see it says B15, and that's, that's the address for the average, and then I got to close parentheses, and then just hit enter, and look at there, I got, that's the difference between this measurement and the average. That's the deviation, if you will, all right, between those two numbers. Um, now, uh, I want to do the same thing for this guy, um, but do I want to have to go through that process for every single value? Uh, of course not. Of course not. So here is the amazing spreadsheet. This is what makes spreadsheets so magical right here. Um, if, if you... If you've fallen asleep, this is when you want to wake up. See that little, um, see I clicked on this, this, the cell is highlighted, but you see how there's this little tiny square in the lower right hand corner, all right? And when I move my cursor over that thing, my cursor changes from an arrow to like a plus sign. That's, that's a special thing. That means if I push, if I push down and, and hold down the left mouse button and then drag it down, it's going to repeat that um, formula for everything. Um, now, there's one little thing, however, there's one little catch. I need to, what the spreadsheet's doing is it's incrementing the value every time I go down. See that? So if I click on this, look what the formula says, B5 minus B15. And then if I click on the next one, it says B6 minus B16. All right, so it's taken the difference between this guy and what's here, but there's nothing here, so it's not subtracting it. So it's basically taking 11.02 minus nothing, and that's why you have 11.02. So there's a little trick, and this is this is a little bit advanced. You, you know, you don't have to memorize this. I'm just telling you for this particular case. Um, we want to anchor this cell. Every single time we take a deviation um, difference, we want it to be with respect to the average. We don't want it to increment this guy. So go back up here, click on this guy, and you see where it says B15? Okay, that's the location of our average. Type a dollar sign. Okay, so that's the, the, the number four key. So do shift four. Now we have a dollar sign. Okay, hit enter. Okay, let's click on that guy again. See, B5 minus B dollar 15. Okay, that's going to make a big difference. Now, if I click on the lower right hand corner and drag down, haha, <laughs> it makes a difference, doesn't it? Now, every single one of these things is taking, is subtracting against the average. Um, and so now I have all of my mass deviations. And now I'm ready to calculate the average of those deviations. Okay, so I'll leave it to you to, um, you know, to take that average because I think it's, uh, you know, that that one's pretty easy. Okay, so if you followed all that, you are doing really, really well. Okay, um, so I'll stop there and uh, I'll, I'll see you guys soon. Okay, thanks.